Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, today I wanted to talk about a little bit of lighting. Uh, I've been growing for a long time, almost 20 years now, and I remember back in the day, you didn't have a whole lot of options. Typically you had your T5s, which are great for vegetative growth. I noticed that when flower production was there, it didn't give you those big, dense flowers that most people were really wanting. Um, your other option was old school HPSs. You had a metal halide for veg and a high pressure sodium for flower. That technology works great. You can still use it these days. Um, one thing I do know is they are hot. Like you start running multiple high pressure sodiums in line, you have to have a ballast to turn these things on. Uh, you have to have a hooded or a, a, a hood that has a either six inch or an eight inch um, size ducting on it to actually pull that heat off. So then on top of needing all of this equipment, you also need at least a six inch fan, an eight inch fan that's going to pull high CFMs to cool these things down. Now, my production on them was still good. The way I looked at it is if you could hit 75% of what you were growing with, whether it was a 400 watt, a 600 watt, or a 1000, because that's all the options that they make in those types of bulbs, 75% is good. So let's say I'm on a 400 watt HPS, if I can pull 300 grams, you're doing pretty good. You know, they always say a gram per watt, but what I've noticed is it's, it's hard to hit that. I mean, uh, your environment has to be completely dialed in, optimal environment conditions to really hit those numbers. So newer technology has been coming out. I remember when the first LED came out. It was a little loomy grow. I want to say it pulled about 150 watts, and it was the blurples that you always see. So you got the blue diodes, the red diodes. When you turn them all on, they were purple. The thing is, that guy was about this big. I mean, it was tiny. It was small, about the same, maybe a little bit smaller than that HLG 100. The thing is, is it wasn't made for production yet. Nobody really knew much about LEDs at the time. I think this was 10 years ago. Nobody knew what was going on. They just kind of threw some diodes out there. Let's throw it at the wall and hope something works. Um, I used to be so skeptic about LEDs. I was honestly anti-LEDs from the time they came out until I actually sat down with the manufacturer of LEDs and kind of explained to me why, how LEDs work versus your high pressure sodiums. So let's take your high pressure sodium for instance. It is just a, a bulb here that's like the sun, and when it is on, it illuminates light at a 360 degree angle. So that's what you gotta think. So when it's light's bouncing everywhere, so you have to have that hood to bounce back down. So by the time that light actually hits the top of that hood and refracts back down, you're starting to lose lumens anyways. On top of that, these lights are so hot that they warm your plant leaf growth up. So I mean, you've gotta be on top of cooling these things down or you're gonna burn them with the high pressure sodium. The way an LED works is you've got the old, I keep seeing new ones come out, like these light bars right here. I like this technology versus the quantum boards, but the quantum boards are still solid. The way these things work is it literally is a board that has your LED diodes onto it and it has a driver on top of it. I mean, everyone's using the Meanwell drivers, the um, Samsung LEDs. They're solid. I have no reason to complain about those. And the way that these things work is when that light from those diodes are actually shining onto your leaf, it's forcing your plants to go through photosynthesis twice as fast. So keep in mind, if you're going through photosynthesis, photosynthesis twice as fast, you're going to have to have more nutrients. That was always my issue. When I first three, four weeks of growing under LEDs had nice, green, happy looking plants. I started getting into week five. As they got closer to that light, I was having issues with yellowing. It really couldn't figure out the reason why. Well, when I uh, increased the amounts of my PPMs on what I was feeding these plants, everything stays nice and green and healthy. As you can see, these little girls you can see them behind me. Now, these are the ones that I'm, I'm about week five in, but I'm hitting these things at close to 1,300 parts per million. Let's say I was underneath my T5s, you might be looking at somewhere four to 500, the same way with the metal halide. They just, your plants, well, what happens is you get salt filled ups inside of your soils. So then your plants can't uptake the nutrients that you're giving to them just because there's so much it'll go through what they call nutrient lockout. So you'll start to see yellowings or even curlings up in your leaves. And that's one way to tell if you're having an issue with your plants. If your plants are standing straight up like this, happy and healthy, that's the way they should be. But once you start seeing curlings up like this, it's always a sign of a toxicity. So that's why you the best thing to do is flush those plants out. Uh, like I showed before, you just flush and flush and flush until you can get that nutrient level back down to you know five to six hundred ppms now I want to talk about yields 
on these types of lights. I know we already talked about the yields on the high pressure sodiums. If you can hit 75% of that draw power, you're doing really well. Especially, you know, you hit 750 grams on an HPS on a thousand watt. That's a, a really good yield off these things. Now, these LEDs, this HL, we'll talk about HLG. I like HLG. They are a solid company. Um, this is their 100. This thing pulls 90 watts. Um, and it has a PPFD, oh look at me, I'm slack, and I had it right down. It was close to like 1.1 micromoles, which is another thing. Back when I first started growing, everything was measured in lumens. Like your high pressure sodium, if you're running a thousand watt, you're close to 150,000 lumens, which is great. You know, you're trying to get close to the sun. Your 600 was pull, pulling closer to 100,000, a 400 was closer to 65 to 70,000. Now with these LEDs, it's harder to measure lumens, so everything's measured in PPFDs. Now, like I said, this one's closer to like 1.1, but it's all about draw power still. So like this light right here pulls 90 watts. Um, there's a great site that I use a lot as a reference. It's called Coco for Cannabis. Uh, now these guys get all of these lights. They'll take a one by one square foot area and they have it mapped out to like 10 square feet. And what they'll do is they'll hang every single light. It was either at 18 inches or 24 inches, and they measure the exact PPFD in each one of those squares. And after that, they can run a calculation that's going to tell you, okay, well, this light is going to cover this square foot, and you can expect these many ounces, whether you're a novice grower or a fantastic grower or a commercial size grower. So I ran the numbers on these guys. I just want to do a quick breakdown. So on the 100, um, on the lower end, you can be get between 3.7, we'll just say four ounces on the low end. If you're a novice grower, you haven't had anything fine tuned, your environment's out of whack, if you, you know, you, you're not exactly the, the greatest grower yet. Four ounces is about all you're going to pull off this, and it's made to cover a two by two square foot area. So a little two by two tent, that's what you're going to get on the low end. Now on the higher end, you're still only looking at five to five and a half ounces. So just so you know, on these lights, I'm not trying to knock anything. It is a cheaper light. It's, it goes for about 160 bucks, but that's what you can expect out of something that pulls 90 watts. Is on the most you're going to pull is about five ounces. <clears throat> now the next one they have is called the HLG 300. It actually pulls 300 watts. Um, it's made to cover a two by four foot area. On the low end, you're looking at 12 ounces for a novice grower. A more advanced grower, you're looking at close to 16 ounces. So you can tell a difference. And that light usually goes for about 460 bucks. So just an idea in price range, you know, 160, you're looking at five ounces on a good grower. On the next size up, you can pull almost a pound off of the, the HLG 300. Um, like I said, it pulls 300 watts. Uh, their next one up, they've got the HLG 600. Now it's their next one up. It's equivalent to draw power of an HPS. Now I did write down some numbers just so you have an idea. So the HLG 600, low end, you're gonna pull 26 ounces for a novice grower. You can pull all the way up to almost 35 ounces for an advanced grower, which you're looking at almost two pounds in a four by four foot area. You know, back on the, you know, the 600s, like I was saying, 75%, when I ran those numbers, you're looking at a beginner grower, 15 ounces, all the way up to 20 ounces for a 600. So you're, you're looking at a huge difference. We're looking at almost 15 ounces difference in a 600 watt HPS versus a 600 watt LED. Um, this company, HLG, since we're talking about them, uh, they also have one more light. Their commercial lighting is called the Scorpion Diablo. Now this guy is a huge mama jama. I've got, I've got one sitting in here, but it's so big that it's hard for me just to pick up. It's a little bit bigger uh, than this one that I've got here in the back. Now that one pulls 650 watts, uh, pulls all the way up to 3.28 micromoles. Um, on the low end for a novice grower, you're looking at 30.7 ounces, all the way up to almost 42 ounces. So you can tell, and that covers a five by five foot area. So things have really come a long way from the old school HPSs, which don't get me wrong, I still like these things. They, I've learned the growing curve is a lot easier starting with high pressure sodiums if you've never really grown anything before. You know, you keep them at a low PPM. You can even follow anyone's just feeding chart and it'll usually get you to good success or, or good yields off of those. Uh, like I said, HLG is a different learning curve, so it is more nutrients to get you where you want to be with the LEDs. Uh, now one thing I didn't talk about was the other lighting which is uh, CMH or LECs. LEC stands for a light emitting ceramics, uh, your CMH uh, ceramic metal halide. 
Uh, this technology has been around for a long time. It used to be in the jewelry industry. Uh, so what they would do is any jewelry store you went to, they'd hang those bulbs up. Uh, when that light shines onto a diamond, it makes them glisten. Uh, well, they learned that that spectrum it gives off actually gives off more UVB. So UVB, when hitting diamonds and things like that, that's what really makes it sparkle. That's the same thing the sun gives off closer to the end of the season. Now, what UVB does to your plants is it will actually increase your THC content. Uh, the only reason THC even exists in a cannabis plant is for is when it's been outdoor growing. Uh, towards the end of the season, it has the highest UVB content. So what that plant is trying to do, it's that plant coats the seed with THC to protect it from the UVB lights to keep its genetics constantly going. Uh, so using that in an indoor grow, that's one of the ways you can increase your THC content is by in, in supplementing UVB. So either growing straight under CMHs, they, they have a 315 and a 630, um, or you can even get UVB bulbs. Uh, they make these things that can go inside parallel with LEDs. They make some that are T5, or actually they're T8 sizes that you can hang and run those as well. But you have to run them on a lower increment. And I'm going to get together uh, with one of the guys that actually manufactures these just to kind of give you a more in-depth detail on them. I know a little bit about it, but this guy really knows his stuff. Uh, so we'll have a podcast with this guy coming up here in the next uh, four or five weeks or so. Um, now, yield-wise on your ceramics, now you're really only looking at on the 315 watt, um, 8.7 ounces as a novice grower up to 11.8 ounces for a more advanced grower, which still on a 315 watt light is still a decent yield. Um, all right, so as I was saying, with our T5s, uh, they work great for seed starting, for cloning, just for getting that root development there. Uh, but you don't get that vigorous growth like you do under either your LEDs, your metal halides, your ceramic metal halides. Um, I've kept mothers under some of the bigger units before. Um, work great to keep those alive just so I could take cuts off of them whenever I did need some. Uh, but I have flowered underneath the T5 before and you don't get those great big thick flowers like you're really looking for. It seemed like everything was wispy, it wasn't that dense, it just It'll still produce, but you're not going to get the yields like running an LED or an high pressure sodium. So I guess my take for the day, LEDs, I am on board with them. Uh, I can get bigger yields, bigger, denser flowers. Uh, you can even supplement with UVB if you're trying to get that THC content up a little bit higher. Um, the commercial one, I do like that Scorpion Diablo. That thing can really put out some weight. Um, all right, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, we'll have more coming in the future. Thank you.